Hello and greetings from Iceland, but I have an update for you about the volcano situation here. First of all, it's still on. This volcano has now been pumping up lava for a week, and it is still possible to see it in live broadcast on YouTube, which is highly recommended on my behalf. To look at this is in a way mesmerizing, so be careful, you can get you know, stuck over it. But let's start on what the scientists know already. And that is that this might be a sealed volcano in forming. And to make it simple, it's big news. We have not seen a sealed volcano form in Iceland for thousands of years. Here we have a photo of Iceland's most famous sealed volcano. It is called Skjaldbreiður. It is just like someone had just printed it out of a 3D printer. Very well formed and around 9000 years old. And here we are on the way to the top of this volcano. Excellent route for jeeps. And on top of it we have a crater that is partially full of lava ponds. But the lava that flow from it was partially flowing underground, coming up here and there on a mountain, giving it this well-formed shape and excellent jeep route. But let's move on the Reykjanes Peninsula again. There we have this shield volcano just south of the capital. On the west end of the peninsula, not far away from Keflavik International Airport, we have another shield volcano. And the third one is here, just few kilometers away from the place that we are having an eruption now. So one might ask, is it the same source that is pumping up lava now as it was when Thrawen Skjaldarhraun, this big lava field, was formed? And when we take a look at those three shield volcanoes, we can see that they are responsible for good part of the lava that creates the peninsula. So these are now ordinary volcanoes. And they are pretty far from the reality that was uh, introduced to us when uh, Reykjanes started to rumble. Or we were told that we would get fissure eruptions, small, not lasting long. This is nothing of that kind. This was a surprise. Volcanoes of this type are capable of uh, pumping up uh, huge amount of uh, magma. So of course we have questions. Questions and questions. And the first question would of course be, will this, are we just seeing it cementing the foundations there? Or was this just a bypass for the lava, who was maybe on the way to the older shield volcano? Could we maybe expect an eruption there? And that is what scientists are looking at now. Or if there are any changes on the surface, indicating that the magma is trying to squeeze its way up there. And that would of course mean that the lava would flow to north, over the highway to Keflavik International Airport. So if I was curious two weeks ago, I'm even more curious now. I somehow had the feeling that if we would see an eruption, it would clear things out, but it is not so, I must say. It was my plan to go up there with my photo equipment to get good shots of the eruption, but it's been a lot of traffic there in the last days, and a lot of photographers, and all producing images of the same things, or the volcano at its early stages. So I'm gonna hold on for a bit, because I had the feeling that this isn't over. This might just be the beginning, so you have to bear with me there. But there is, however, plenty of footage online, and as the eruption goes on, there will be less and less of recent material, and that is where I'm going to squeeze myself into the market. And until then, I am also going to finish two short information videos about the surroundings of the volcano. They were both in the making before the eruption started, and I am well on my way with them. So through them, you will get plenty of good information. Not directly about the eruption, but nevertheless useful. But as for this volcano, who has no name yet, one of the biggest questions is... What about the lava? Where will it flow? Is there any danger? And in the moment, as you can see through the live camera, all the lava is in the same place. It's just like a bathtub that's been gradually filled up. That process will take around 10-20 days more. Then it will take off and flow into the next valley. I have however not seen any drafts of the potential magma flow after that valley. But I'm pretty sure that a map of that kind is in the making now. All this region has been thoroughly mapped, so it should not be a problem to see where the lava will go at any stage. 
But what worries me is of course the amount. When we look at the Thrawn Skelterhraun, it's a huge landmass that's gone under it. And the north coastline of the Reykjanes Peninsula is from that volcanic eruption. So this is a scenario that was so not expected. And the experts are very careful when it comes to statements. The answers might be, it could stop in next week, but it could be decades. So it's really not uh, telling me that much. It is only telling me that uh, they don't know. At least not yet. But what they do know is the size of the older eruptions around. So that should uh, tell us something. And I'm also thinking about the bigger picture for the Reykjanes Peninsula. Because scientists have said for over 20 years that when something will happen there, it's going to mark the beginning of a period that could last for 200 years. But that is, however, an issue that is not spoken about today. Or if it's mentioned, it's very likely. So they don't want to go there, not yet at least. Maybe not to scare people, but uh, I say for myself, I just want to know what's going on. Simple as that. We also know for sure that uh, we have an opening down there now, and the magma that is coming up is coming from a depth of uh, 17 to 20 kilometers, 10-12 miles. It's a primitive kind of magma, they say, all the way from a mantle, and it is just uh, so absurd that this is happening uh, just beside the capital of Iceland. It is ridiculous. So of course I'm thinking, like, uh, is this something that is going to go on for the next decades? Will this be the trademark of Reykjavik, glowing volcano next door, gradually eating everything that gets in its way? Or is this just a tourist piff? And if it was a tourist piff, it was bad timing. So I'm just so curious to know what is going on. How big can this mountain grow to be? And will Reykjanes overall be a safe place to live in or nearby for the next decades? So wherever I go over the subject, it's just more and more questions. And the only answer I'm getting is that we don't know. And I'm not blaming anybody. This is just the geology. They have good tools to measure all kinds of movements. But when it comes to predictions, they are not just careful. It is also about not to scare people. So this is a complicated situation. If there are any geologists looking at my channel, feel free to comment. Because I'm not diving into geology myself. I am not expert. I'm just asking the questions. But I will continue to be on the lookout, listening to experts. And if there are any geologists on my channel, feel free to comment. Tell me what you think. I won't hold you responsible. But this is just so fascinating subject for me. To be able to look at the new land being created just in front of me, like now in live TV. So once again, I'm recommending the link I'm leaving to the uh, volcano, day and night. I might be adding some time lapses or some material from that in order to simplify the lava flow. The time lapse format is just uh, excellent for that. But I'm also cleaning my camera now. There are some uh, dust particles uh, bugging me in my camera and uh, I'm cleaning it and uh, making it ready for uh, volcano visit. Hopefully in the next days, but at least I will keep you informed if something new happens. And with that, I'm sending you all my best from the volcanic island Iceland.